Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Swipe Up, episode 203. This is the show where I share my opinions on current events. Let's get it started, shall we? Starting off with this first post, America has an e-bike problem that can't be solved with more e-bikes. Uh, e-bikes, for those that don't know, electric bicycles, basically a bicycle that has an electric motor and that can help uh, either increase the power of your pedaling or you can just ride it like a motorcycle, kind of, an electric motorcycle. Uh, I have looked at, looked into e-bikes over the past few years. I definitely would love to have an e-bike. Uh, there are some e-bikes that have uh, amazing designs. There's some. There's a lot that look like choppers, basically, uh, and that's a main reason why I would love to have one, uh, a, as long as well as having an electric vehicle of some sort. Uh, especially the fact that I do not have a vehicle, uh, a running vehicle, uh, at the moment. Also, I'd love to have an e-bike because you don't have to have, because of the problems, the problems that this post is talking about, one of the problems is they don't know how to classify e-bikes, right? Because they're more powerful than a, a standard bicycle, but they're not as powerful. They don't have the range and they don't have the speeds that you would get from a motorcycle or a moped or a car. So the classification doesn't really fit anywhere. Uh, and because of that, basically an e-bike, you don't need to have, I think you have to wear a helmet as you would with a bicycle, I guess, depending on your state. Uh, but it basically takes on a lot of the same, as far as I know, which don't take my word for what the laws are in your area. Uh, but my assumptions are that they follow, mainly follow the rules and laws of bicycles. Uh, so if you have to wear a helmet uh, where you're riding generally, uh, although with these you can ride on the streets. They are technically street legal, but they don't go as fast as cars. But you don't need to have a license for them, which certain... Uh, mopeds, certain uh, motorcycles, I think, if they're under a certain engine size, you don't have to get uh, a special motorcycle license. You can just use your standard Class C license. Uh, but with e-bikes, you don't have to have any driver's license, and you don't have to have any insurance. Uh, you don't have to register them. So as far as a low-cost transportation alternative e-bikes are pretty amazing uh once you buy them after you charge it up you're ready to go uh you don't need to get anything other special with the e-bike so i don't know like as e-bikes get more popular i would imagine that they would start forcing people to register them uh they may even require you to at least have uh, a driver's license, like a, just a standard driver's license, maybe. Um, I just hope that they don't turn into, you have to get insurance, you have to get like uh, a special permit, you have to register them every year. Like hopefully it can be, they can be treated like bicycles. Um, I don't know, but it's a weird time. And that's mainly what this article is talking about, right? It, it's just... It would just it would make them more popular. I mean, for most people, I mean, depending on where you live, obviously, uh, having an e-bike may or may not work. But like if if you're like in a. You know, for a lot of people, biking isn't necessarily the best option, like you may live just a little bit too far away from your work to bike to your work. Um, I mean, a lot of people are lazy. I know people that could walk to work, like we're in walking range of work that would choose to drive. They would choose to get in their car for like a minute instead of spending five minutes walking to work, um, which is insane. But having the option for people 
that uh, maybe they you know have to commute to their their work and it's not that far away. Having an e-bike would be so much better because you're not exhausting yourself riding it. You know, you can either ride it just using the electricity or you can pedal and it just it, it's assisted. It, you know, you, you know, instead of you can use it as a bike. So if the juice runs out, um, you can just pedal the rest of the way. So it's pretty versatile. The designs are pretty cool. They do have ones that are like that can fold up. So if you have to like use it as part of your commute, like taking your e-bike to the bus and then hopping on the bus or the subway, you can fold it up. Or like if you get to the office, you can fold it up to make it more compact so you can carry it in with you so you're not having to tie it up to a bike rack. Uh, it's pretty. They're pretty versatile. The ranges are pretty good. The speeds are pretty good. Um, like this, the fastest I've seen are like they get up to like 20 miles an hour or something like that. Um, obviously, I'm sure it depends on if you're going uphill or not. It depends on how much you weigh. But... Uh, yeah, I think I think it's an industry that's just going to continue to take off. There are things where you can modify your existing bike your existing bicycle uh to make it an e-bike as well. I don't know how efficient those are necessarily, but it's possible. It's possible. There's a brand that I really like uh that I think I've actually talked about on the show many years ago uh called Wicked Thumbs that look like choppers and i think they were recently over the pandemic they were acquired by harley harley purchased that company uh which makes sense because electric is the future how fast we get to that future depends a lot on government regulations how fast they're forced to get to that future but uh i know harley has i know there's a few manufacturers that have electric bicycles there was that documentary series about uh ewan mcgregor and one of his friends that would go on these long motorcycle road trips uh long way down long way around and long way up i think was the series um a great documentary series and on the most the the final of the three they used electric motorcycles that were prototypes from harley i think they tested a few different, like even their their support vehicles were electric. Uh, it was pretty amazing. I, I really love that show, uh, that documentary series. And um, I would love to have either an electric motorcycle, electric like moped, or electric bike, an e-bike. I would love that. I had a motorcycle for a bit, uh, and I ended up getting rid of it because I didn't have any. It was just sitting outside. I didn't have anywhere to like to cover like it was just out in the elements in san diego and it just it, you know the battery always died because i didn't ride it enough and uh but if i had an e-bike especially my lifestyle now like my van doesn't work i registered it non-operational so i don't have to pay for insurance and all that shit it's just sitting rotting pretty much falling apart slowly as it was anyway but i have no need to drive anywhere right now you know i'm trying to work from home uh i get things delivered i don't need to go out anywhere but it would be nice to have that added freedom to have an e-bike to just go to different things there's nothing really in range like everything's pretty spread out here but um yeah, it would it would definitely be a lot more pleasant to ride around than a regular bike because it's way too hot right now. I mean, it's been like 110. We've having having a heat wave in California, so it's like 115 degrees every day still in September, um, which is supposed to be starting to cool off, and it's just the exact same hot, humid weather as that we had during the summer. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. I can't imagine things will end up well for it. I think just things will become more regulated, more, uh, you know, they will have to at some point create a category in order to handle e-bikes. Uh, but right now they're pretty wide open as far as what you need to operate them. There's no real, uh, rec- you know, requirements uh but anyway 
I would love one. If anybody wants to give me an e-bike, if you are an e-bike manufacturer and you want to sponsor me, you want to sponsor the Ray Taylor Show, uh, you want me to review an e-bike, do it. Give me an e-bike. Let me keep it. Or even just let me play around with it. I've never even ridden one. You know, I've ridden motorcycles before, but no, no e-bikes. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. Uh, one of these days. Like, if I could trade, like, if I knew I could sustain myself working from home, and I could get rid of my van, like, co comfortably. I would gladly trade it for an e-bike. For a nice new e-bike, uh, one of the bigger motors so I can get good speeds, uh, an extra battery, take the extra battery for longer trips. But I would love that. I, I miss having a motorcycle, and an e-bike would be even better. Uh, even though I'd probably get killed by the horrible drivers out here, but... You can still ride these on, like, sidewalks. That's the thing. That's the whole thing with that story. Anyway, I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor Show. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com. You can get T-shirts, different artwork available, different designs, all on high-quality materials in all the sizes. There's also iPhone cases made of biodegradable material. That's right, this is not bad for the environment, this is good for the environment. So all of those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases. Designed by me, sold by me. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com to support the Ray Taylor Show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of the Ray Taylor show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. Let's move on. Netflix turns 25 years old today, which this was put out uh, six days ago. But as you see, a little over a week ago as this episode comes out. Uh, so 25 years of Netflix. I remember Netflix. I am this old. My friend used to work at Circuit City, which was a an electronic store back when it existed. And uh, I remember them. I would go in every Tuesday and spend easily $100 on new movies that would come out. And they would hand out these red cards for free rentals through Netflix, which at the time, Netflix was a DVD. Blu-rays weren't even out yet. A DVD rental service through the mail so this was the the service that destroyed blockbuster and hollywood video and all the the movie rental stores that existed which I, you know i loved i worked at a blockbuster don't really like the company hate the owner uh but going in to rent movies was a huge part of my childhood looking at movies looking at the covers trying to pick movies based on the covers um, just, you know, every aspect of it. it was so much fun, you know, parents going out of town, mom going out of town, my friend coming over, we would have, we would stay up all night eating junk food, playing video games and watching movies. And we would always, you know, go to Hollywood video or video depot. We'd rent our movies. And there was a service that I like never thought about getting into. Cause I was just buying movies. Once I started making decent money, had a job. I would just go and buy movies. I collected movies, which all of those DVDs I ended up giving away because streaming services came through. Netflix streaming services happened. But in the beginning, it was DVDs, and I finally signed up for the movie rental service because I started ripping all of my DVDs onto a hard drive. So I had probably like I had a few hundred movies in DVD form, and I ripped them all into a hard drive onto a server that I could access from any TV in my house, right? It was, I had my own me movie streaming service. This was like early days, Netflix, early days, Hulu, Amazon Prime wasn't a thing yet. Uh, I don't know if it was like early, early days with iTunes being able to rent stuff and buy stuff through there. But that was like I set up my own server of movies and I would rent them through Netflix. And then there was software that I would use to transcode them to rip the DVDs onto my hard drive and then watch them. So I would just 
rent movies. I would get like three at a time or whatever the, the service was. I'd rip them all and then put them back in the mail, and then they would send me the next three on my server. And I just built up the server. Eventually, the server broke down. The server crashed. So I lost all of the movies that I had ripped. And then eventually I'd give away all my DVDs. So all of that work I put into ripping DVDs was for naught. But at the time, I loved it. At the time, it was like having all of the different streaming services. But now you have HBO Max, you have Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, all of these services. And then you have like stuff like Tubi. Like You can almost find anything now if you have just enough of the streaming services. So it's like it makes that whole process obsolete. But it's been an interesting thing. And I remember when I remember when I was collecting VHS tapes, early internet, like late 90s, and wishing there was a service that I could download. And I was able to, I had a friend that was able to like, he knew where to download like movies and stuff. And I, when I worked at a movie theater, I would sell bootleg CDs. Like, he would download the CDs for me. I would burn them and then sell them at work to people. And I remember getting a bootleg copy of The Matrix right when it was still in theaters. It was a three-disc VCD or DivX. I forget the format, but it was The Matrix, like, VHS quality, and it took up three different CDs. And it was, like, amazing. (laughs) It was like, oh... But I had, like, I wish there was a service where you could just stream movies. It's like, why can't you just do that? And then eventually streaming services actually came out. And uh, it's crazy. And now Netflix is like, not only are they a service where you can get a bunch of classic movies, which maybe they don't have the best selection of those kinds of movies, but they do produce some great TV shows and movies. Uh, I mean, Stranger Things obviously is great it's not the best but it's great you have uh like a show like squid game never would have taken off a korean show never would have taken off globally if not for netflix um then you have the ryan reynolds and rock movies like gray man and red notice um so many great shows so many great movies and it's insane it's insane where we're at with streaming and netflix and netflix was one of the first it was like netflix and hulu were like the two and then slowly all of the networks started getting their own and they all sucked until kind of recently like even hbo max was horrible until pretty recently and now that discovery bought out hbo and warner brothers it's possibly going to regress back into being horrible uh But it's kind of an amazing time where you can have access. And even streaming services like Shudder, like niche services, like the Criterion channel, getting access to those movies, those like classic films with a subscription. It's amazing. It is amazing what you can do for like five to ten bucks a month. It's amazing. So Netflix pioneered. They proved that it's possible. They altered the landscape of entertainment. They changed, like they led the way. Like this stuff wouldn't exist if Netflix didn't come and disrupt everything. Is that good? Is that bad? It, It definitely changed stuff. I mean, the way movies, the way actors get paid, the way movies are produced, uh, the way they're distributed, they don't get that back end money. Right. It's not just like the the theatrical experience is kind of going away, but then also that extra money they would get from DVDs sales and rentals doesn't exist because it's they get streaming contracts. So for the consumer, it's amazing for the industry. It's kind of upended a lot of stuff and changed a lot of things. And as all industries do the people that work in those industries end up getting paid less. Uh, And the people who run the industries end up getting paid more. But the people who consume those products have a better experience. 
So it's there's there's positives and negatives all over the place, but kind of crazy. Twenty five years Netflix has been able to drink for a few years now. Um, but yeah, congratulations Netflix. I still I'm still a fan of Netflix. Some people hate, but it's like they still have decent movies. They still put out good shows now and then. Like you know, I'm watching Midnight Mass. That's a really fun show. Um, you know, some of their movies are good. I enjoy some of their movies that they put out. I'm I'm not bl- I'm blanking on all the great ones, but there's some great movies that they put out. Great TV shows that they put out. Like they've saved, mo- like they like I probably never would have gotten into Breaking Bad if not for Netflix. Better Call Saul like may not have existed if Netflix didn't widen the audience for this AMC show called Better B- called Breaking Bad. You know, like they tried to bring back Arrested Development, kind of failed, but they tried, right? They've done some good things, and uh, you know, I enjoy it, and I enjoy that they're f- they've forced everybody else to step up their game, you know. And I think I think they do a pretty good service. The whole thing with the video games makes no sense. The they're them trying to go into. Uh, like uh adding advertisements is horrible they're regressing in a lot of ways to try and make more money i i don't like that but you know that's the downside of everything is that nothing can stay great forever anyway let's move on 7.9 billion people are still living through covid19 and thousands are still dying every week at least one in 10 people with COVID-19 get long COVID. Uh, new variants could emerge that spread even faster. Uh, Omicron became the dominant variant in just one month. Uh, our health is precious. Protect yourself. Uh, this is from the World Health Organization. Obviously, thousands of people still have to blah, blah, blah. Uh, get vaccinated. Keep safe distance. Wear a mask. Cover sneezes, cough. Open windows clean your hands like all of these things after the pandemic um i think has changed a lot of people's habits uh i think we view sickness and health differently i think we're much more conscious of how we act when we are sick uh staying away from people when we are sick and it's also shown us how a lot of people in this country just do not give a fuck don't care about their health really don't care about your health uh just do not care at all about the other person the in the room uh the other people that exist around them uh people crying about wearing masks just the most like we got to see a lot of grown adults act like children and it's uh eye-opening in a lot of ways and uh you know we see people defending uh corporate greed more than human life and it's uh pretty disgusting and uh you know it's it's a crazy it's a crazy thing the pandemic everything that happened uh and it's crazy that like people are still dying or at dying at even a higher rate this year than they were last year and this year everything's open like there's no restrictions really I think there was a little bit of restrictions during maybe the beginning of summer where the things started. I don't know. Are They've talked about restrictions going into the fall, but it seems, I, you know, the healthcare industry, they've learned how to deal with the virus better. So they're not being flooded as much as they were. They're able to help people survive a lot easier obviously the vaccine has helped reduce a lot of the symptoms and and keep people from getting seriously ill uh it doesn't cure you it doesn't prevent you from getting sick it just helps you uh avoid dying it helps you uh, avoid the serious side effects of getting the serious symptoms of getting sick of getting covid um you know washing your hands hand sanitizer all of those things uh you know i it's it's definitely given me an excuse not to go out and socialize it's given me an excuse to enjoy being an introvert right i don't have to pretend to enjoy being around people i don't have to force myself into social situations because it's 
it's the acceptable thing to do to to avoid being talked down to by people for being a loner or an introvert it's definitely made me feel more comfortable being the person i am uh the true be my truer self uh so anyway uh it's still going People ignore it, but it's still there. COVID's still a thing. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, dewormer doesn't do anything. Uh, being a millionaire is going to be much more. Being a multimillionaire is much more advantageous to getting over COVID than taking dewormer. Uh, but, you know, people like Joe Rogan don't realize their privilege having being a multimillionaire and being able to have access to the top-notch medical uh, uh, services at your fingertips versus somebody like me who has no insurance, who can't afford to go. I can barely afford to buy over-the-counter medicine when I get sick. Uh, so getting something that would require me to go to a hospital would be pretty devastating. Uh, but then you have m multimillionaire uh, racist white supremacist Joe Rogan, <laughs> which I don't – I mean – you want to talk about a guy who votes, has the same political stance as Nazis, votes for the same politicians as Nazis, you know, encourages people, his fans to vote Republican, uh, and then also has said the N-word enough times publicly to have a supercut available on YouTube. Like, I I'm pretty comfortable at saying that dude's probably pretty racist. And he said some things in the past. He's, he's always kind of thrown things out that are very white supremacist type uh dog whistles uh a lot of people that are are have those kinds of belief talk about genes and how uh good genes people have and he's kind of a guy that that says a lot of those types of things i don't think he thinks he is but uh he's accidentally just in his co regular conversation he's kind of said things i don't know how i got onto that but anyway uh, let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces. That's right. I am also an artist. I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images head on over to inspireddisorder.com buy original art buy prints if that's your jam if you want eight by ten prints on high quality paper also if you're looking to wear some art there are shirts available with original artwork by myself select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form you go to inspireddisorder.com you buy original artwork you buy prints you buy shirts you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to InspiredDisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show. Let's move on. Chris Rock says he's declined invite to host the 2023 Academy Awards. You want to spell duh? You want to say duh? Why would he? It's a gig that nobody wants to do. It's a horrible gig. It's boring. It adds nothing to a comedian's reputation, life, career, resume. It's not it's it's nothing. Right? It's a job. And he was hired to do that job and his employer did nothing to protect him. Why would somebody want to work at a job where your employer will allow you to get assaulted on live TV. Do nothing after the assault, by the way. You know, Will Smith was able to walk his ass all the way back to his seat and sit down. He was able to accept an award for a performance that was mediocre at best. Uh, so, yeah, it's not surprising at all Chris Rock would do it. Uh, he doesn't need the money. Uh, and uh, I, I, there, I can't imagine there ever being like I would imagine most comedians would turn down that gig before the slap. And after they saw how the Academy treats their employees, the people that work for them, that host their pathetic w award show, uh, it's not surprising that Chris Rock declined 
to do a job that sucks to begin with and that was proven to be a dangerous uh, job. Like, it, obviously, I can't imagine them allowing that to happen again. But the fact that they not only allowed it to happen and then there were no consequences until much later. Like, if somebody assaults somebody, that person should not be allowed to exist in that area anymore. He should be taken out. You should be ejected from, like, there's comedy clubs that treat their performers better than the Academy Awards did. Uh, and it's, it's ridiculous. Like, imagine the guy that attacked, uh, or, uh, that attacked um, Dave Chappelle, right? The dude had a weapon. But imagine, even if he didn't have that weapon, imagine if he just allowed that guy to go back to his seat and for the rest of the show. Get out of here. They should have ejected Will Smith from the building. If not arrested. I mean, I don't know if he should be arrested or not, but whatever. He should have at least been ejected. He should have walked himself out. But that's not. Will Smith wanted the attention. That was all performance for Will Smith. He wasn't involved at all in the altercation. The joke wasn't about him. He was was standing up for his wife. He's like, I'm going to go assault somebody on live TV to show my wife that I care. It was a joke. Uh, good for Chris Rock. Uh, it's I, I can't remember the last time I've watched. I don't know if I've ever watched the Academy Awards. Maybe when I was a kid. They've just I've just gotten t- too mad at their decisions over the years. It's just it's baffling some of the movies. I love that Parasite won it. I forget who won it recently. Um, but it's just I don't know. Award shows for art. It's just it's just I don't know. It's just kind of stupid. It's just stupid. It's all political. It's all marketing. And, you know, it's a a shitty gig for a comic. So good on Chris Rock. Who cares about the Oscars? Pretty stupid. Uh, But let's let's, uh, finish up. Let's do some shout-outs and get out of here, shall we? Shout-out to Motherboard Vice. Shout-out Puppety. Shout-out Who, the World Health Organization. Shout out the Film Magic News, but most importantly, shout out to you. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out. Today, Today is the, the day, day where you, you wake, wake up, up and you realize, realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.